OK, looks like we are ready to go here. Um, so I wanted to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, my name is Ty Miller. I'm a third semester medical student at Sabe University School of Medicine. I've been asked to come answer some common questions about what it's like to live on Seba and what it's like to attend SUSAM. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, I am from a small town in Wisconsin in the States. I got my Bachelor of Arts in International Studies with a focus on culture and globalization from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. After graduating, I worked in corporate and labor and employment law for four years and as an emergency room scribe for two years prior to coming to SEBA. Um, so the administration has asked me to answer some common questions that people might have when they're thinking about coming to SEBA. So um, here we go. The first question, how did you first learn about SEBA and what went into your decision to come here? So I first heard about SEBA about two years ago from some colleagues in the ER. It turns out that the former chief scribe in that ER was a current fifth semester student at that time. So I connected with her and she was a great resource and sounding board uh, as far as giving me information about what it's like not only to come to the school here, but what it's like to live here, where to live, um, and other information like that. Um, simultaneously, I was applying to other schools in the Caribbean, and um, including the other top three schools down here. And I, I was accepted to all of them. What played uh, the major factor in deciding to come to SEBA was uh, twofold. First of all, uh, the cost and the value. Um, wherever you go, medical school is going to be expensive, whether you're down in the Caribbean or back home in the States. SEBA has a great value compared to other schools, and that paired with uh, their USMLE Step 1 pass rate uh, really sold me. Um, and another thing is the class size and the size of the school overall. A lot of schools down in the Caribbean admit 500, 600 people at a time. So it's almost, if not literally, impossible to develop a relationship with your professors, which is important for me as far as my success here on campus. So. Um, Okay, moving on to the next question. How did you find the adjustment to school in the island? Was there a mentor program? So I honestly came to SEBA with uh, an open mind about what it was like, and I think that was a great way to ease the transition from having the creature comforts of the States and Canada um, to coming to uh, a tiny island in the middle of the Caribbean Sea uh, and starting medical school. So um, I think if you have an open mind, you'll be successful here. As another way to ease that transition is Seba's uh, mentor-mentee program. My mentor, Shalimar, was awesome. She connected with me before I even got to the island and gave me a checklist of things that I didn't have to worry about bringing, things that I definitely should bring. Um, and the mentor-mentee program is also a good way to pass down little bits of uh, institutional knowledge uh, about how to be successful on campus and on the island. Um, so moving on to the next question. Um, what is housing like? Uh, what is the food in the island like? And do you feel safe? Um, so I never lived in the dorms. Uh, I currently live in a nice little bungalow next to some other medical students on the south side of the island, and it's wonderful. It's quiet. We have an ocean view, um, and it's walkable to school, which is important to a lot of people. Um, technically, we live in the village called The Bottom. There are multiple other villages that you can live, which aren't really walkable, but some people like living further away from campus. Um, you can live in St. John's, in Hell's Gate, or Windward Side, and um, all of them have their benefits. So um, as far as food goes, the groceries are good. They're better than you would think for a tiny island in the middle of the sea. Um, and as far as restaurants go, there aren't any chain restaurants here. Everything's locally owned, uh, and there's really good seafood uh, at some of the places up in Windward Side if you're a seafood lover. Um, the island itself, if you are a hiker or a naturalist or a scuba diver, this is the place to come. I believe it's one of the top five 
rated places to go scuba diving. Uh, we have Mount Scenery, which is the highest point in the, the Dutch Empire. There's great hiking. Uh, you can go swimming down in the ocean uh, pretty easily. And so I, I really urge you to, if you come down here, uh, take, take advantage of the natural beauty that the island has to offer. Um, all right. So the next question is about what first semester is like and what the anatomy lab is like. So um, now that I'm wrapping up my third semester, I look back on first semester, even though it was about a year ago, very fondly. Um, we had so much more time to do things. Um, but in first semester, you will take anatomy and embryology, as well as human histology and physiology and clinical skills. Um, everyone, all of the professors in first semester, particularly the anatomy professors, will bend over backwards to help you understand a subject and make sure that you're successful in first. I really love first. And as far as anatomy lab goes, I think it's uh, a fun and also um, poignant way to, to learn anatomy firsthand. One of, the, one of my favorite things that we did at the beginning of the semester was have a moment of silence, uh, thanking the families and the donors for donating their bodies for us to learn and become good physicians. So um, it's a little bit scary, but it's also a great opportunity to learn. So I hope that's helpful. So next question, um, what have your other semesters been like? Do they vary a lot? Are the professors available to answer questions? Um, so I'm in third right now at the end of it. And so far, all of my semesters have been pretty radically different from each other. Um, I just detailed the, the courses in first. Um, in second, you'll take biochemistry, immunology, uh, microbiology, genetics, and ethics. Um, so it's kind of a 180 from what you're doing in first, um, but it's definitely full of high yield information as you prepare for your shelf exams and first step. Uh, third has been very busy, but it's a fun and interesting semester because it's the first time since um, since getting here that we're starting to integrate the things that we learned in first and second semester, and we're starting to develop um, good clinical pictures of stuff we're going to see on step one and on the wards when we start our rotations. Um, so um, as far as professor availability, if you talk to a professor and they aren't immediately available that day at lunch to meet with you, I've never had to wait more than two days, and generally it's the next day. Um, so even you can stop by a professor's office and if they're not doing anything, you can sit down and have a chat about going over an exam or developing a strat strategy for studying. So um, that's the nice thing about having a small student population and a good ratio of professors to students. Uh, the next question is a good question. It's have you bonded with your classmates and do you help each other study? Uh, so yeah, of course, I think it's impossible to go through medical school, go through the challenges both academically and emotionally without developing a special bond with the people who are right there beside you. We see each other more than anyone else in four month bursts during the semester. And I've definitely developed some lifelong friends. As far as uh, study habits go and group study, a lot of people benefit from group study. There are places on campus where you can easily study in a group. I personally study in a place called the Fishbowl. Uh, I believe I have some viewers in the Fishbowl right now. Uh, and it's a place that's open on campus 24 hours a day and people from all of the semesters study in there. I think it's an awesome way to uh, remind yourself of where you were a couple of semesters ago and also see where you're going to be in a couple of semesters. We all help each other out either helping, I'm, I'm able to help people who are in first and second who uh, need assistance and then I also ask the fourth and fifth semester students who study in there for help. So um, there's good reciprocity in the fishbowl. 
Um, so the next question is, what is a typical day like for me? Um, I'm a creature of habit. I like to get up at 5 a.m. every day and get to campus quickly so that I can get a couple of hours of studying in before classes start. Typically, we are in class until 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Uh, and then most people either head to the gym, eat a quick dinner, and then study for a couple of hours, if not multiple hours, before heading to bed. On a weekend before a set of exams, I'll probably study nine or 10 hours uh, Saturday and Sunday. And if it's the weekend after uh, a set of triple blocks, I'll try and devote either Saturday or Sunday to going on a hike or doing yoga and trying to take care of my mental health as well. Um, so that's that. Next question. Um, what is preparation like for USMLE step one? And do you feel well prepared? So um, since I'm not actively preparing for step one, I can't really answer that. But I can talk to you a little bit about something called a shelf exam, which is something that is developed by the National Board of Medical Examiners that asks step one type questions. Uh, about specific subject matter. So for instance, at the end of this semester, we'll be going through a behavioral shelf exam and a neurology shelf exam. And that is a good way to kind of uh, ascertain where you stand on the subject matter and see where you might need to improve before you write the comprehensive basic sciences exam at the end of your fifth semester. Um, knowing multiple rounds now of friends who have sat step one recently, um, and seeing their scores, I know that the school is doing its job um, and that those people are putting the time and hard work in themselves uh, to do well on step one. So, um, and this isn't an official question that um, the school wanted me to answer, but I know I was in your shoes a little over a year ago and um, I was worried being a little bit of an older student, being out of school, for five years and worried about how things weren't as fresh for me as they would be for other people and whether that would make me successful or not. And so um, I think just a couple ways that you can be successful uh, at SABA are primarily to be uh, dynamic and adaptable. Uh, and I say that with regard to taking exams, particularly block exams. Um, it's, of course, nice to start your semester off on a good foot, um, but if a block exam goes poorly, give yourself your hour of pity and then get back on your feet, change your study habits and respond. Generally speaking, one block exam is not going to change the course of your education here at SEBA and you should respond positively and put the hard work in and, and having failed exams myself and having known friends who did and still ending a semester successfully, it's definitely doable. So just be adaptable and get back on your feet as quickly as possible after exams. Um, the next tip is to be realistic but work hard. And I say that with regard to sleep. Uh, I really try and monitor my sleep. I don't really study past 9 p.m it's a really good idea to get into a healthy sleep habit. Don't sacrifice sleep for studying. Um, you're already, as they say, drinking from the fire hose in med school, uh, trying to gulp down boatloads of information. And if you're not sleeping well and you're cramming information, you're just not, you just won't do well on exams and you might as well not take the exam. So uh, try and get good sleep as much as you can, and that's a good way to uh, ensure that you'll be successful here. And then finally, it's kind of a uh, philosophical tip, um, especially at this time in the semester when we're all bogged down with everything we've learned so far and knowing that we have shelf exams and knowing that there's a lot riding on this final push here at the end of the semester, Try and take moments to step back and remind yourself why you're here 
and ins re-inspire yourself. Um, I know that sometimes I get bogged down with trying to memorize all the facts, everything I need to do to be successful on exams. And so when I take a step back and I remind myself why, I wanna he why I'm here, I wanna help people, I wanna help society, I wanna save lives, that re-motivates me to sit back down for however many hours and study. And uh, I think that if you could implement that into your practice, I think that you could also be successful. Uh, so I know I kind of went quickly through all of that, but we have plenty of time. So if uh, anyone wants to offer up some questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. And if I can't answer them personally, um, please email the admissions committee and they'd be happy to answer questions for you. Yes, Danica, that's so true. So a lot of people ask, like, what is your biggest fear about coming down here? Mine was that I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I'm too old to do this. I'm too far out of school to do this. Uh, and I know plenty of people who are older than me who are just killing it down here and they are friends and they are an inspiration. So if you are a non-traditional student, like plenty of us are down here, um, just know that you can be successful too. You just gotta put the hard work in. Sorry about the interference now, it's pouring outside. Okay, so Melissa wants to know what has been the biggest challenge so far? Um, so something I'm really focusing on this semester, which I hadn't done in first and second, was um, just balancing the time I need to study with taking care of my mind and body. And I know that's something that a lot of people in medical school in general, especially this program, struggle with. Um, but, you know, giving myself a couple of hours on a Saturday morning away from studying to do yoga, to get my mind straight and in the right place has been more beneficial to me this semester than skipping all physical activity, all things that I like to do, like playing guitar or going hiking. Um, doing those things has been more high yield for me than spending that extra whatever two and a half three hours on a saturday or sunday morning um just forcing myself to study so any other questions Okay, it seems like, oh, okay, there are some more. Oh yeah, Moose, okay. You got the vibe, Moose. Um, yeah, so Dr. Boileau, um, I talked about how when I was applying to school down here, um, I was simultaneously applying to uh, Ross, SGU, and AUC. Um, all of which I was accepted into. And uh, there are a couple factors that played into me coming here. Number one, knowing someone who uh, was here before getting here and getting a positive review from her, um, knowing that the value was there compared to the other schools, even with scholarships offered, um, SABA's value and their step one pass score 
um, were definitely selling points. And then um, also just the size of the classes and the school in general, um, it was a big um, turn off to hear that schools, uh, bigger schools, admit five, 600 people uh, in their first semester and make it essentially impossible for people to meet up with their professors, ask questions, get things straightened out. Um, so that's something I really appreciate um, that SEVA allows us. All right, well, I think that covers uh, all of the talking points that I wanted to hit. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. And if you have any more questions besides what I covered here, please feel free to message me personally on Facebook. Ty Adam is my name. And um, if it's a question that I can't personally answer, I'll just direct you to our director of admissions and our admissions committee, and they can answer some of the more detailed things that I might not know about. All right. Thanks, guys.